the robot can run some parts for me on the weekend or at nights, and I'm all for it. So, I mean, that's, that's the goal is to get as much unattended time as possible. Another one of my favorite topics is robo drill, and I know I usually welcome you to the show, but I don't want to be redundant all the time. So let me welcome Adam to MTD CNC so we can talk robo drill. Okay, robo drill still occasionally has that either misconception or does it actually do what we say it will do kind of idea, right? So Adam, more or less, let's not say new, but actually had the experience somewhat recently to, to look at a robo drill and all he's run prior to this robo drill are bigger machines. So he had that real curiosity of can it do what people say it can do with that 30 taper machine? And I am not going to steal his thunder today. Adam, what did you learn about robo drill so far? Yeah, absolutely, man. I was I was totally skeptical when I saw these little tool holders and the you know little retention knobs and everything. You know, I've seen the YouTube videos, but um, kind of like you know you got to show me, I got to see it before I believe it. But I mean, still getting my feet wet. But I've seen these machines do some stuff I never would have imagined. You know, coming from 40, 50 taper machines, but I mean, I'm pushing three eighths, half inch end mills just about as fast, if not faster in some situations. Um, you know, with the high RPM and through cooling, we're able to just push through whatever material we want um, with almost no limitations. So you said a lot of materials. Uh, we, maybe we're going to do a, a lighter cut and a faster feed, but these machines can handle that. But these are also true five axis machines, aren't they? Are you? What else are you able to do inside of here? Oh man, I mean, there's like I said, the, the possibilities are limitless. We can do whatever we want. You know, we're making all kinds of bevel gears and um, we got a full five axis program running right behind me. Um, I, I don't think there's anything you couldn't do in these machines. The limitation is only the imagination, would you say? Yeah, I, I would say there's a little bit of a learning curve, you know, um, understanding that you gotta pick the right tool size. You gotta give the tool a little bit of room to move around. If you try too big of a tool, gonna get a little jerky movement and stuff but finding the right tool size and it's like butter man it's it's magic when you hit it so butter and magic i like those adjectives yeah. so i'm seeing i'm standing in front of this automation cell behind me it looks like it's still being set up worked out what are you excited about for the world of automation a lot of times people will say well i like that it communicates with each other i like that it's fanic talking to fanic the entire time are you going to be able to kind of set it down, let it run, do its own thing, let the company make a ton of money, you run off and run some other machines. Is this the plan? Yeah, absolutely. Or at the end of the day, maybe just work a little less overtime, you know, <laughs> if, the, if the robot can run some parts for me on the weekend or at nights, and I'm all for it. So, I mean, that's that's the goal is to get as much unattended time as possible, and um, we're, we're getting close to getting automated on this part, and uh, we're going to have both these machines running the same part, different operations, and, you know, we're excited. Well, Adam, this wasn't part of our conversation. It's not necessarily even a part of FANUC, but I got Adam here. Adam's a younger generation type of machinist as I'm starting to age out. So because there are so many new machinists out there and potential machinists as well, I want to take this purple per, this opportunity to talk with Adam about something that I didn't prepare him for, and that is, would you recommend this type of career for a lot of other people out there your age? Yeah, I mean, if... Uh if this is something that interests you, I would say definitely get involved. Um, you know, there's a lot of good companies out there that are still taking care of employees, and there is a future in this trade. You know, manufacturing isn't going anywhere, even with the robots and stuff coming. I mean, there's always there's always going to have to be somebody to fix the robot, program the robot, keep the robot fed, and uh, you know, maybe just put coolant and oil in the machine because the robots can't do that yet. We think, but uh, <laughs> nicely done. You know. Yes, I do agree. And thank you. That I know that wasn't in preparation of our interview, but it's important to have that authenticity and kind of throw it at you because you're right. They're not taking jobs. They're adding jobs. There's a lot to be done here. Yeah. We appreciate your candidness to go along with it. For everyone who's watching, thank you all. This is this has been a joy to share Adam's story, the Robo Drill story. And thank you all for continually paying attention to MTD CNC. We truly hope that what we share is beneficial to you so that you can have success in your shop as well. Adam, thank you so much. Thanks. You are incredible. All right, have a good one, man. You too, brother.